fiery horse with the speed of light, a clot of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Hey! Frank Dillon rode slowly toward the ranch corral with pride in his eyes as he surveyed the fine spread that had grown with the years. He was particularly proud of the prize cattle with which he was gradually stocking the ranch at great expense. As he reined up and dismounted, he saw Ned, one of his cowhands, riding at a fast pace toward him. What's up, Ned? What's the hurry? More cattle gone, Mr. Dillon. What? Twenty more of your prize stock rustled off the north range during the night. That's the last straw. Get to the bunkhouse and tell the others. I'm going inside first, and I'm going to tell the sheriff. Right, boss. Get out there. Come on. Third time my place has been raided. Get some shells. Martha? Martha? Be there in a minute, Frank. I'll track him down somehow. If I ever get my hands on those low down ornery coyotes, Frank. I'll... Frank, what's happened? Plenty, that's what. I've stood all I'm going to stand. From now oh, on, I'll... Frank, calm down. Never do make sense when you're angry about something. Oh, what's the use? Now, now tell me what's the matter. More of my prize stock gone, that's what. Twenty more head I've run off during the night. Ned just came in from the North Range and told me. For sakes, that's the third time. Yep, the third time. I've lost close to 60 head altogether. Those rustlers have proved to be too smart for us. For the whole cattle association, for that matter. The Bar Y lost some of their cattle last night, too. Ned heard about it from one of their men. Frank, there must be some way to put a stop to that rustling, seems like. Haven't they any idea at all who might be behind it? Well, if we had, we'd go after them and string them up. We've had guards riding that north rangeland every night. But the thieving rustlers seem to know just where those guards will be and when to move in. It's mighty strange. Yeah, I reckon it is. But so far, we can't figure it out at all. Well, there must be some way to stop them. There is. I'd sure like to know it. Oh, I'm going into Blackville and report the matter to the sheriff. Oh, like the other two times, I guess it won't do much good. Frank, take care of yourself. Don't you worry, dear. I won't be back for a few hours, Martha. Meantime, in the hills outside of town, the Lone Ranger with his 14-year-old nephew, Dan Reed, and Tonto had pitched camp. It was noon when Tonto, who had ridden to town that morning, returned and reined up at the campsite. Oh, Scott, no fella. No fella. Easy, Scott. Easy. Aye, easy, no sorry. Any news from town? Ah, uh, me hear plenty news. What's happened, Tonto? Well, men in store talk about rustlers. Say them take plenty cattle. 
from ranchers near Blackville. Rustlers, huh? That's right. Rancher named Frank Dillon tell men him lose 20 head of prize cattle last night. It's the third time rustlers run off cattle from Dillon Ranch. Other ranch lose cattle last night, too. Hmm. That means there must be a large gang of rustlers to hit two places in one night. And that's what me think. Ranchers have meeting this afternoon, then decide what to do then. I see. I think I'll disguise myself as a rancher and go to that meeting, Toto. You can come along with me. Ah. What about me, sir? You better stay around camp, Dan, until we come back. Yes, sir. Come on, Toto. Help me fix a disguise so that I can go without my mask. Ah. In his disguise as a rancher, the Lone Ranger set out for town with Tonto. Dan Reed waited at the camp for about an hour. Then, becoming restless, the boy decided to ride toward the foothills of the nearby mountains to the west. Mounting his stallion, Victor, Dan set out and rode at a leisurely pace for some time. The trail led uphill for some distance, then followed along a low mountain ridge that overlooked a lush valley beyond. Finally, Dan reined up to enjoy the view. Ho, ho, Victor, ho, boy, ho. Kai, I can see for miles from up here. Steady, Victor, easy. For a few moments, Dan sat in the warm sunshine and let his gaze wander along the valley below. Suddenly, his eyes came to rest on a herd of cattle grazing almost directly below him, and he could see a few men on horseback moving among them. As he sat looking down at them, he was suddenly startled by a voice behind him. Well, you get what? through gaping down at those cattle, son. I want to talk to you. Oh, gosh, you scared me. I didn't hear you right out. I rode up easy like, so you wouldn't. Come here. Come on, Victor. Ho, Victor, ho, boy, ho. What do you want, sir? I want to know what you're doing up here, for one thing. Oh, well, I just came out for a ride. I stopped here, and then I noticed those cattle down in the valley. I saw that you were looking down at him, sort of interested like. Golly. I just thought of something. What's that? I heard rustlers were stealing a lot of cattle around Blackville. I wonder if that cattle down there is part of them. Uh, just because you heard about some stolen cattle doesn't mean that every herd you happen to see are the ones that were rustled. But that's a small herd down there. There seem to be so many men. Why, two cow hands could look after a small herd like that. That's smart figuring for a boy. I think I'll ride to town and report what I've seen to the sheriff. No, I don't think you will, son. What do you mean? Just what I say. What? This gun says you're a little too smart for your age. Oh, golly. Why pull a gun on me, mister? Well, say, I bet you have something to do with the rustlers. That is a stolen cattle. You're talking yourself right into trouble. That hidden herd is the stolen cattle like you say, but you aren't going to have the chance to tell anyone about it. You're coming along with me right now. No, now, I won't listen, go... son, I'm not used to pulling a gun on a boy, much less using it. But if you don't do as I say, I'll just have to do it. Now get going. Along that trail over there. Uh, all right. Come on, Victor. Get up there. For about 20 minutes, Dan rode ahead of the man who had drawn a gun on him. They reached the valley and rode toward a group of horsemen who were waiting near the small herd of cattle. Hi there, sellers. What are you bringing that button here for? Oh, there, oh, oh, Victor, He was up on the ridge looking at the cattle down here. He decided these were the stolen cattle and was going to report to the sheriff. It's a good thing you caught him then. That's right, Ned, it is. If Frank Dillon found out one of his cow hands was in with the rustlers, he'd kill you with his own hand. Yeah, he sure would. Get off your horse, kid. All right. Easy, boy. One of you men take this button to the cabin yonder and tie him up. Put his horse in the lean-to. I'll see to him, Ned. Come on, you bring your horse. I'm holding a gun on you, so remember that. Now, let's go. Come on, Victor. The rest of you men look after the cattle and keep them from straying. I want to go to the cabin with Sellers and have a talk. Right, right. Yeah. Steady one. Yeah. Come on, Sellers, we'll ride to the cabin. Get up. Get up. There. A short time later, Ned and Sellers were sitting in the cabin talking. Dan Reed was on a cot in the corner with his hands and feet bound. And the ranchers meet and go, Sellers. Not so good. Some of them couldn't get there early, so they called another meeting for five o'clock this afternoon. Well, uh, 
I'll have to leave shortly if I'm going to make it. <laughs> As owner of the Bar Y Ranch, you have to be there to tell about the cattle that you lost last night. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, Frank Dillon is fit to be tidy, so mad. We'll get a good price for those prize cattle of his over the border. Yeah, I'll have the men start driving them down the valley tonight. <laughs> well, I'll go back to town to the meeting. I'm, uh, I'm going to suggest that they let me write to the Cattlemen's Association to send down an investigator. Hey, are you loco? They send somebody to investigate. That'll be find. one letter that'll get lost, oh. so don't worry. Oh. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I better get going if I hope to get to the meeting in time. Hey, Mr. Sellers. Yep. I don't reach down here. The kid just kicked you a bronc in the leg. Hey. Now he's too lame to ride. Oh, doggone it. I have to get to town and I... Well, I'll uh, ride the boys' study now. My horse won't carry a rider unless I tell him to. Well, in that case, we'll take you out there and have you quiet that stallion down so I can ride him. On time, man. All right, boys. What kind of risk is riding that white stallion into town, Sellers? Well, I'll hit him outside of town and walk in so nobody will see him. There you are, kid. You get up now. Gosh, those cords were tight. Come on, let's get going outside. Yeah. Hey, that stallion's still acting up in the lean-to. Bring him out here. Steady there, steady. Hurry up with that horse. I'm coming. Come along here. Oh, there. Ho, oh, oh. ho. Easy, boy. Easy, Victor. Well, there he is. All right. Quiet him down, boy, so I can mount him. Go home, Victor. Go home. But... Hey, he's getting away. I'll fix that. Oh, you won't. Let go of my arm. That went wild, Ned. Well, this doggone maverick spoiled my aim. Oh. That'll teach you. You'll be sorry for that. Wait and see. Uh, now what am I to do? Take Matt's bronc. He can stay at the cabin. Watch the button till you get back. All right. Take that boy back inside and tie him up again, Matt. All right. Come on, you. Get him. All right, Sellers. Take Matt's bronc, like I said. You'll have to hurry to make that meeting. Meantime, when the Lone Ranger and Tonto learned that the meeting had been postponed until five, they waited around town until that time. Then, with the others, they went to the general store where the meeting was to be held. All right, all right now, man. Let's quiet down so this meeting can get started. All right, let's listen, Tonto. Ah. Now, you all know that last night those rustlers struck again. Taking some more of my prize cattle. Quiet now. Well, this has gone far enough. We've got to do something about it. Sure. Oh, well, I, uh, I agree with you on that, Frank. You aren't the only one who lost cattle last night, you know. I had some of mine stolen from the bar wise spread, too. Oh, yes. Come in. I think the only thing to do is to write to the Cattlemen's Association for an investigator to come here. I can... Uh, I can get off a letter tonight. Well, that's a good idea, Seller. Go ahead and sign the letter. Sure. Oh, wait. Wait just a minute, all of you. Jed Seller's idea is a good one, I admit. But it'll take time for a man to get here. Meanwhile, those yellow-back rustlers might strike again. Yeah, right. The sheriff's out right now with his deputies trying to get a line on him. But they seem to be plenty smart. What do you want to do about it? Sure. Well, I say let's get together. Get all the men we can from each ranch and put them into groups. Let those groups scour the territory in search of the rustlers. One of those groups is bound to get a line on them, seems to me. Yeah, I'll just a bit of fence. I admit the cattle Frank lost were prize stock, but the rustlers stole more from my range, and I stand to lose as much as Frank. Now, I say let's wait for the investigator to get here. Then it'll be up to him to stop them once and for all. Now, neither I nor you can afford to take our cow hands off the ranches. Just to play it being posse. The sellers has the right idea. Taking the men away would leave the cattle unguarded. I say let's do like sellers say. Hey, all right, Jim. All right. It's all set. I'll get off a letter tonight to the Cattlemen's Association. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. After the meeting broke up, Sellers, the rancher, approached Frank Dillon at the hitch rack. Hey, say, Frank. Yeah? I hope you don't hold any grudge about me getting them in to see things my way, but it's no use losing our heads over this wrestling. Mm, I still don't agree with the way you want to do things, Sellers, but like I said, inside, waiting for an investigator to get here is just inviting those rustlers to try to grab off some more of our cattle. Well, maybe if they find out we're keeping closer watch, they won't try to rustle anymore, Mom. The funny thing about it is that they seem to know just where we have men watching and where we haven't. That's what I can't figure out. I know one thing, and that's this. If I lose any more cattle before that investigator you're writing for gets here, I'm taking every ranch hand I have and every rancher I can persuade to join me. And we'll rip this territory apart to find those crooks. Well, steady now. Adios, Sellers. Get up there. So long, Frank. <laughs> After listening to the talks by Frank Dillon and Sellers, the Lone Ranger and Tonto left the meeting and rode out of town toward their camp. The Lone Ranger spoke of what had taken place. I'm inclined to agree with Dillon's plan, Tonto. As he said, it will take some time for an investigator to get here. That's right. For waiting will give the rustlers a chance to dispose of the stolen cattle. That's right. Me not like sellers much, Kimasabi. I wasn't very much impressed by him either. Well, we'll soon be in camp. We'll uh, have supper with Dan. Then you and I'll sit out and try to get a line on the rustlers, Toto. That'd be good. There's a campsite just ahead. Let's hurry a bit. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Oh, Silver. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh fella. Big fella. Oh, fella. There's Victor. But Dan doesn't seem to be here. Well, maybe, maybe him go for a walk. Victor's acting strangely, Toto. Ah. Easy, fellow. What's the matter? Look here, Toto. Victor's been running hard. His coat is covered with dried foam. Isn't that right? And try to tell us something. Dan must have gone riding and something happened. Victor came back alone. Maybe that it. Take Victor's bridle and bring him over to our horses, Toto. I'll put on my mask now. Oh. Come, Victor. And what we do? The backtrack on Victor and see if we can find Dan. Easy, big fella. Easy, Scott. Easy. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Come, Victor. Dusk was falling as the Lone Ranger and Tonto approached the top of the ridge where Dan had stopped to look at the valley below. Dan ride long way. Yes, I hope he isn't hurt. Oh, Silver. Oh, oh, oh fella. Oh, fella. Oh, here. Here where Dan stopped. See, big fellow. See anything? Ah. Other horse stopped here, too. Victor come over here. Then both horses' tracks go down side trail there. I wonder if Dan could have... Listen, Toto. Ah, uh, me hear cattle. Yes. Let's look down in the valley. Look there. Herd of cattle down there, Toto. Them may be stolen cattle. I'm sure they are. Dan must have run into one of the rustlers. Somehow Victor got away and came back to camp. Not what me think. Toto, come on. You ride to Frank Dillon's ranch. That's the closest. Have him bring as many men as he can get together. Ah, and what you do? I'll leave Victor up here, and I'm going to follow that trail down into the valley and find Dan. Hurry, Toto. Ah, me hurry. Easy, Scott. Easy. Get him up, Scout! Victor, I'll leave you tied to this small tree until I come back with Dan. There. If any one of those rustlers has harmed Dan, I'll... Easy, big fella. Come on, Silver. Riding slowly and cautiously, the Lone Ranger followed Victor's tracks. Victor had recently been shod, and the new horseshoes left a sharp and distinct trail. When the Lone Ranger saw that the tracks led toward the herd, he reined up. Oh, Silver. Oh, steady, Big Fella. Hmm. I can't follow the tracks out there and be seen. Dan isn't in sight. I'll ride up the valley around the herd and see if I can pick up the trail again. Come on, Silver. 
Keeping out of sight of the cow hands attending the herd, the Lone Ranger rode along the edge of the valley, carefully watching the ground. Finally, his sharp eyes once again picked up the marks of Victor's horseshoes, leading away from the herd toward the end of the valley, where the masked man could see the outline of a cabin in a grove of trees. Eagerly, he urged Silver forward. Come on, Silver. Meantime, the outlaw Matt and Ned the cowhand from Dillon's ranch were in the cabin with Dan. It's getting dark. Isn't it about time Sellers got back, Ned? Yeah. I'm anxious to know how things went at that meeting in town. Sellers will take the shortcut here, so he ought to be coming soon. <laughs> we got a good setup. What with you working for Dillon and knowing every move his men make, and with Sellers being a rancher and stealing his own cattle along with the others to throw people off the track, <laughs> nobody will ever suspect you two are heading this gang. Hey, well, when I tell them... <laughs> oh, shut up, kid. You won't ever get the chance to tell anybody anything. That's right, he won't. When the men drive the cattle down the valley tonight, we'll take the kid along. He'll just get lost somewhere before we get back. Oh, here's Sellers now. Yeah. Hi, Sellers. How'd you make out in town? Oh, fine, fine. <laughs> you know, those ranches are easy to influence. Frank Dillon tried to persuade him to form several posses and hunt for the rustlers, but he lost out to my plan. To write for an investigator. That'll give us plenty of time. That's your will. Say, uh, Ned... Maybe a better report over to the ranch before we start moving the herd. Dylan started for home, and he might go looking for you. Yeah, yeah, I'll go over there and see him. Tell him I'm going to stay out on the range to protect what cattle I can. Good. When I get back, we can start the drive. Yeah. The crooks won't get away with us much longer. Now, uh, listen, son. Unless you say the better. I'll have plenty to say later on. Wait till people hear that the owner of the bar Y is one of the crook leaders. Why, you little... Oh. If I weren't tied, I'd show you. Give that loudmouth Maverick a good suck and shut him up, Sellers. I'll shut him up, all right. It... Reach all of you. Mask on. Get him, Matt. I'll get him, all right. No, you won't. Oh, my hands off. Now, you, Sellers, untie that boy. Be quick about it. Don't do it, Sellers. I got this hombre covered from behind. It's one of our men. He come here just in time. Now, it's three guns to yours, mister. Drop your guns, mister. As the Lone Ranger hesitated, Sellers, who held a gun in his hand, turned it and placed it against Dan's temple. Then he spoke. I got this gun against the boy's temple. Even if you shot me, I'd put a bullet in it before I fell. Now, drop your guns like you said. All right. You win. Bring him here. Go ahead. Well, now what? I don't know who you are, mister, but you made a mistake busting in like you did. We'll see who made the mistake. Are you all right, Dan? Yes, sir. He won't be for long. Neither will you. I uh, notice you know my name, so we can't let you get away from here. Now get his guns. Put them on the table here. Well, we keep him covered, Bill. You come here and tie him up. Make sure you don't get in the way of our guns so he can't pull any tricks. I'll be careful. Some rawhide hanging on the wall over there. Yeah, this will hold him plenty tight. All right, mister. I'm tying you up. Then we'll take away that mask and see what you look like. First, I'll see... Oh, my shoulders! Hey, somebody shot the lamp out. Get a light, quick! I don't need a light. Oh! I'm getting out of your brown dome. Hoping to take advantage of the darkness to get away, Ned made for the door as the Lone Ranger, with a heavy blow, knocked Sellers to the floor. Even as the Lone Ranger sprang to the table and grabbed his guns to stop Ned from leaving, he heard a familiar voice at the doorway. Nobody leave cabin. No! Who hit me? Me strike match. Then you see. You not move me whole gun. Hello, you're just in time. I noticed a candle over near the bunk where Dan is. Light that. Ah, uh, me untie Dan. Last man's got his guns again. Yes, now I'll use them if necessary. There. Candle lit now. There. Dan, you free. Get that man's gun, Toto. Uh, me get it. Uh, now, get over there near Sellers and the other two. My hand is hurt. Ah, oh, don't whine about it. What, what happened? He sucked in. You fell like a ton of bricks uh, when that Indian shot out the lamp. What's going on out there? Dylan, men with Sheriff and Posse get rest of gang in Valley. Dylan, we're done for, Sellers. That's right, you are. Oh, oh listen, that there are the leaders. Hey, what is this? Dan, what's the meaning of this? I'm covering you, mister. Gosh, I'm glad you came here, Mr. Dillon. You don't need your gun, Mr. Dillon. This mask, hombre, is one of the rustlers, boss, and so's the Indian. That's a lie. Ned and Sellers are the gang leaders, Mr. Dillon. Oh, wait, I know the Indian's all right. 
He came after us and brought us here. Man with mask. Friend me tell you about. Oh, 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 I'm sorry, mister. I didn't know that. Sound like them get wrestlers. Fight and stop now. Yeah, they had him about rounded up when I rode over here. Well, Sellers, I've heard of skunks before. But you're the biggest I ever met. Some of that cattle out there belongs to him. He stole it from his own range so he wouldn't be suspected. That's right, Dylan. And your own man, Ned, was in on the deal while he helped run off your cattle. Well, here's the sheriff and a couple of deputies now. These are the ringleaders of the rustler's gang, Sheriff. A mask, man, huh? Well, drop those guns, Mr. Oh, wait, wait a minute, we... Sheriff. I made the same mistake. But he's on our side. Sellers and Ned and the other one there are the rustlers. Now, what do you mean to say the Sellers was... I can't believe it. It's true. They caught me when I discovered the stolen cattle and brought me here. I heard everything. Sellers got me into this. Why, are you lying coyote? It was you who come to me with the idea. Well, take them out of here, boys. I've heard enough. Come along, Dan Toto. We'll leave now. Adios. So long, mister. Hey. Say, Frank, who in tarnation is that masked man? How come he was on our side in this fight? Well, when the Indian come after us, he said his friend had gone ahead to trail the rustlers to their hideout. He didn't say he was a mask man, though. Well, it's funny you take us into jail and let a mask on break go free. <laughs> Well, that's easy to explain, Sellers. The Indian did tell me that his friend who'd gone on ahead was the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Brace Beamer.